Hi, my name is Jack Lee Huerta. Um, I work at the University of Minnesota Supercomputer Institute, and I'm a PhD candidate in scientific computation. My advisor is Professor David Lilja. Um, performance analysis can be a challenging and time-consuming endeavor. Modern CPUs have complex microarchitectures that improve overall code performance. The use of multi-level caches, deep pipelines, buffers, and prefetchers makes it possible to hide and mitigate stalls. To understand CPU behavior, performance counter units are included in CPUs to track hardware and software events. Performance counters would keep track of the number of times a particular event occurs for a user-defined sampling interval. There are a number of performance metrics that are used to understand the, system be the system's behavior. These metrics use different performance counters uh, to compute how different CPU components are being utilized. These performance metrics rates can include instructions per cycle, IPC, loads per cycle, LPC, L1D cache load misses, L1D cache store misses, among many other rates. Uh, performance analysis is an iterative process. The program is profiled, changes are made to the code, a different compiler option is selected, or OpenMP Pragma is used, or the system configuration can be changed. The program is compiled again if, it, if necessary, and then the program is executed and profiled again. The goal is to compare the resulting performance metrics to see if you can identify a pattern after a modification has been made. Uh, this is called differential analysis. But it can be difficult to identify patterns when the performance metrics ratios are nearly identical, even when the system or the program was modified, to better understand how changes affect the performance and the different, different CPU components. We adapted a technique from the field of economics, purchasing power parity to better identify patterns and identify differences between ratios. Purchasing power parity has been used to compare currencies of countries by using different products as benchmarks. Here's an example of uh, three different performance metrics of a benchmark. The uh, 363.swim uh, benchmark is a weather prediction prediction benchmark that is part, part of the SPEC OpenMP 2012 suite and was written in Fortran. We, we ran the benchmark multiple times and increased the number of threads from 64 to 128 to 256. Here we see the IPC rates, the instructions per cycle, and LPC rates, uh, the loads per cycle, decrease as the number of threads was increased. The loads per instructions, the LPI rate, uh, remain relatively the same for all thread settings. So how, so how do you identify differences in patterns? And most importantly, the effects that a program modification or a system configuration change had on the system, the effect it had. One suggestion came from the book Intel Xeon 5 Processing High Performance Programming, Knight's Landing Edition, Second Edition. In this book, the author suggested a ratio comparison only when one part of the ratio was changed. For example, in the case of instructions per cycle, it will focus on either the number of retiring instructions or the number of CPU cycles performance counter values to see if the changes that you made had any effect on either of those two. The challenge is that some changes might have an effect on both performance counters, making it difficult to follow the suggestion of allowing for just one portion of the ratio to change. There are times uh, when the changes in the configuration, the compiler option you change, or the code changes that you made had an effect on runtime, but they didn't have a perceivable or noticeable change in the performance metrics that you are using or that you were look, that you were looking at. Uh, and that might be because the change had an effect, the changes that you made had an effect on both the numerator and the denominator, so the, those are, the rate uh, remains the same, but the actual values stay the same. We can benefit from comparison approach, like a comparison approach that can show any relative changes between rates when normalized against a baseline. This baseline comparison can give us a sense of the relative changes between runs. And uh, here we see uh, the results of the uh, 
computation of PPP metric. We propose the use of the purchasing power parity or PPP uh, rates. Purchasing power parity can show that the relative changes between uh, can show the relative changes between ratios. In the case of uh, the benchmark we saw earlier, 363 swim, uh, the instructions per cycle and the loads per cycle rates can be clearly seen to change as the number of threads increase. So it is decreasing, but the loads per instructions rates uh, look identical or very similar. When the rates are normalized using purchasing power parity, the relative changes can be seen. In this case, loads per cycle rates increase over 50% for 128 threads and over 100% for 256 threads when compared to the baseline of 64 threads. Uh, purchasing power theory comes from the field of economics. It makes it possible to, com uh, to compare similar products in different countries by computing how much each currency is buying you in terms of similar products. The most well-known example is the Big Mac Index. Uh, the Big Mac Index was introduced by The Economist magazine in 1986 to compare different currencies using uh, a Big Mac burger as a comparison product. Uh, when the Big Mac Index is compared with the currency exchange rate, the Big Mac Index gives you an indication of the extent uh, to which the currency is undervalued or overvalued. Big, Big Macs were adopted as a benchmark because it is a product that is widely available across the world and the ingredients uh, used to make this burger are relatively the same. They're standardized. So if you get a, for the most part, if you get a Big Mac here, it might be the same as you want to get in Europe. So here we have uh, an example of how the Big Mac index is computed. Uh, uh, this example comes from the Economist magazine. Uh, the comparison is between uh, Big Mac purchased in China and the United States. Uh, the Big Mac, co Big Mac cost was of $5 in the US and 20 yuan in China. The currency exchange rate at that time was 6.4 yuan per dollar and the uh, Big Mac price ratio, the cost of the burgers in each country was four. So to compute the PPP rate, uh, we subtract the currency exchange rate from the price ratio and then divide by the currency exchange rate. Uh, in this example, we show that the uh, yuan is 37% undervalued as compared to the US dollars. Uh, this means that uh, an undervalued currency in this uh, situation signifies that the dollar uh, equivalent prices are lower in China than prices in the US. The opposite occurs when the currency is overvalued. Uh, dollar equivalent prices are higher than in the United States when the currency is overvalued. Okay, so what does this have to do with computers? Uh, performance rates. We adapted the purchasing power parity formula to normalize performance metrics. The uh, PPP exchange rate is the currency exchange rate of the Big Mac index. In this case, for our purposes, a performance matrix denominator is used to compute the PVP exchange rate. Baseline values are the values of the performance counter. When the run used, uh, the baseline is going to be the 64 thread run. For the metric ratio, uh, it is going to it, the metric ratio is the equivalent of the Big Mac price ratio. Here we divide the performance metric that you want to uh, compare by the baseline 64 performance. 64 thread performance metric result. Uh, this is an example using uh, IPC rates, uh, PC rate comparison. So to, com to compute the uh, PPP normalized rate for the instructions per cycle metric, uh, we use the cycles, CPU cycles for the PP PPP exchange rate and the IPC rates for the actual metric by the uh, rate ratio. For the PPP exchange rate, uh, we use the denominator of the uh, IPC, which is in this case is the CPU cycles, uh, to compute the PPP rate. The 64 thread result is was used as a baseline. So you use the baseline of 64 and you did, um, the results of the, either the 256 or 128 thread run is divided by that. The IPC ratio is the division of the IPC 128 or 256 thread run divided by the 64 thread uh, baseline. Um, our experimental setup 
use the uh, stack OpenMP 2012 benchmark suite. Uh, the OpenMP benchmark uh, is a highly scalable set of benchmarks written in C, C++, and Fortran. Uh, this benchmark is frequently used to compare multi-threaded systems performance. Uh, people follow a standardized way of running the benchmark and then results are publicly available in the repository once you submit the results and they are approved for uh, acceptance. For our experiments, we use a dual socket, a Thunder X2 uh, ARM 64-bit system. We 32 cores per socket and up to four threads per core, and we have 256 uh, gigabytes memory. We use five performance counters at a time for each run using the perfstat uh, tool uh, with the option to collect the perform that was used to collect the uh, performance counter values. There were a number of issues that came up as we were using this system. Uh, we this is the first ARM system that we ever used. Uh, we realized after we had done the experiments that the BIOS needed to be updated. So the uh, when you look at the paper, some of the uh, benchmark results do not scale well. And that this is probably because the BIOS needed to be updated. Um, the latest BIOS release allowed for the system to use a higher transfer rate for them. So that was one problem. Uh, the other problem was that in Center 7, uh, whenever we use certain type of uh, performance uh, counter metrics, uh, the system locked up. And also, the Centos 7 had a number of random system crashes. So, if you are going to use uh, this Thunder X system, we recommend Centos 8 because that, that's been a more stable uh, platform. Uh, we checked in the, we asked a question in the, I asked a question in the art forum, and they uh, told me that for the uh, driver available for the perf to only certain uh, performance counters could use uh, perf record while others. Uh, had to use perp stat. So that's something to, to be aware of. Um, that being said, uh, if you encounter, I went in, promise that we encounter since it's eight, it, 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 just, it was just a core dump as opposed to a system lockup when we had where it is in center seven. These are the uh, different performance metrics that we explored, that we analyzed. Uh, these are the uh, Metrics that are described in the ARM architecture reference manual for ARM V8 architecture uh, profile handbook. Uh, the most popular one is IPC, which describes how hard the CPU is working. The other ones are LPI, uh, which which was in the earlier example, tracks the amount of loads, and LPC, the uh, loads per sec uh, per cycle, which tracks the rate of loads. Other metrics such as uh, L1D cache misses and memory access were used. We included write back rates because uh, it's been published with, uh, in other uh, conferences that uh, the write back rates can have an effect on the system. Uh, it was reported that they are a potential source of uh, denial of service attacks. This occurs when the uh, write back buffer becomes full in a non blocking cache. The entire cache is blocked until buffer space becomes available. So it's another rate that you should, a metric uh, performance rate that you need to keep, a, you should be able to keep an eye on. Here's a uh, properly worked out ex uh, example. So we go back to the uh, 263.swim uh, ex example. Here we have. A, uh, we're looking at the loads per instruction rate. We compute the PPP exchange rate by dividing the number with higher instructions of the uh, for the 256 thread run by the retired instructions of the 64 thread run, which is the baseline. Uh, this results in a PPP exchange rate of 48.48. We then divided the LPI, LPI rate for 256 threads by the LPI of uh, 64 threads, which is the baseline again, and use the uh, results of the PPP exchange rate to subtract and then divide. The resulting PPP rate was 137% for 256 threads, and the corresponding PPP rate for, for the 128 thread run was 61%. So this is the 137% uh, and this is the 61%. Uh, 
So. The PPP rate shows that the instructions are overvalued because we are using uh, CPU. Uh, we're using retired instructions as the uh, baseline, as the normalizing uh, metric. So, so it shows that the instructions are overvalued for the 256 thread run and also the 128 run. In this case, there are less instructions for the given number of loads in the 256-128 thread run as compared to the baseline run of 64 threads. The PPP rate shows that the number of retired instructions needed when using 256 threads to complete the task, in this case, the retired loads, was relatively less than for the 64 thread run. Uh, here we have a uh, example for the IPC rate. In this case, we have a negative uh, value. Here we compute the PPP exchange rate by dividing the number of cycles by of the uh, 256 thread run by the 64 thread run. This ratio is going to be 4.20. We then divide the IPC results for the 256 thread run by the 64th IPC rate results. The uh, IPC rate for 256 threads is, is 0.134, and then the 64th thread result is 1.16. And then using the uh, PPP exchange rate of 4.20, we come up with a PPP rate which is negative 97% for the 256 thread run. In this case, we can see the IPC rate for 64 threads was higher than the rate for 256 threads. The PPP rate indicates that the cycles are 97% over, over undervalued. Minus 97%, so they're undervalued. They're, the number of instructions for the high number of cycles in the 256 thread run was not relatively similar to the 64 run, 64 thread run. There were more cycles handling less instructions Hence, their worth was less than in the case of the 64 thread run. Uh, so, how do we, what do the different PPPE uh, rates, or how do, how, how do we get an understanding of the uh, PPP rates, whether they're negative or positive? So, when the PPP rates are close to zero, this indicates that the difference between the metric, the ratio of the metric and the metric baseline and the PPP exchange rate is minimal, which in turn results in a small PPP rate. This means that it takes about the same amount of counter denominator units to achieve a similar metric rate when comparing a different thread setting to the baseline setting. As the value of the metric, you know, goes to zero, the metric, uh, the, the ratio of the metric divided by the metric baseline goes to zero, or the PPP exchange rate becomes rather large as compared with the uh, metric uh, ratio, the PPP rate becomes negative. It could potentially reach a maximum of uh, negative 100%. We don't go any higher than that because there are no negative metric values, so that's one thing. So negative uh, PPP rates indicate that the metric has a rel relatively smaller effect when compared to the baseline. And then we have the case where we have uh, positive uh, rates. A positive rate is achieved when the PPP exchange rate is smaller than the metric ratio. In this case, the metric value can be a larger in magnitude than, than its baseline, the 64 thread run, or the counter denominator value is smaller than its baseline. It needs fewer counter denominator units to reach parity with its baseline. Uh, so what are the main takeaways here? PPP normalized metrics make it possible to identify relative differences between rates. It makes it possible to distinguish between pat, uh, distinguish patterns between similar rates. Rates can be amplified or reduced. There are other techniques that give information relative to baseline, such as the roofline model, which gives you gives users an idea of how their code is performing relative to memory or and floating point peak performance. PPP can give you can give users information relative to any baseline and it can be used on any performance metric ratio. Uh, we show that rates can give us an incomplete picture. 
Both the denominator and the numerator could be changing simultaneously. We show that the use of a PPP can give us information about the relationship between performance metrics as relates to a baseline. These differences can make it possible to better understand how different components respond when changes to the program or its configuration are, are made, such as increasing the number of threads. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so much. Uh, and uh, any questions so far? All right. So uh, if you don't have any questions, so I have two quick questions. The first one is about: uh, <clears throat> Did you use any uh, <clears throat> any existing tool to validate the, I mean, uh, correctness of the of this metric? Whether oh whether the uh... the oh, oh, I'm sorry the accuracy did you validate the the accuracy of this metric by any existing tools or any uh, benchmarks for example? Well, uh, the benchmark. Well, I I can't validate the results of the metrics, right? So whatever perf gives you 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 run with that. So the idea is that you run multiple times and then you you see whether or not you know there is a outliers and then you either take the average or you take the median depending whether or not you want to you know be not be affected by the outliers. In this case, mm -hmm. we use averages. The tool the tool that SPEC gives you verifies the results of the benchmark. So you are you are ensured that the benchmark that the system ran to completion and that the result that it came up with it is between a certain amount of you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the tolerance is a certain amount right so mm -hmm. when you normalize when 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 we normalize then you normalize against against uh, the baseline of sixty four threads because we want to see how to the metrics uh, relate to the to just you know the the smallest number of threads that, you know one thread per core. Mm -hmm. uh, this is no different from normalizing uh, speed ups, right? When you divide the uh, it's, it's the same it is the same idea that you you're normalizing and then you're trying to figure out mm -hmm. on the uh, denominator of the metric how 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 did it grow based on that. So mm -hmm. I, I don't see how we can. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So, oh, I mean, let me try to refine my question. So, uh, actually, the first question should be, <laughs> should be, I mean, how to use this kind of metric? I mean, uh, does this metric give us any, I mean, uh, concrete feeling about how to optimize the code or, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, how to use it? Did, did you use? I mean, I think about this so, before. So, what what is what is the added value of this? Ultimately, that is the question. What is the added value of it? And yes. I refer and re, and refer to the uh, to the book from the K and L. Uh -huh. So it's like okay, so you're looking at a ratio, and the ratio might be the same. What does that tell you? It, well, that the the numerator denominator might have, are the same, or they grew, or they they increase or decrease about the same rate. Mm -hmm. That's why you have the same, the same uh, ratio. Mm -hmm. But if you want to understand how does that compare relatively to another setting or to another, uh, another uh, configuration, it would be nice to normalize against something. Right. In this case, what what is the you? We're taking the big mic approach because. I'm looking at the metrics from the point of view. Okay, so you, ha you how many cycles it took you to put away these instructions, or how many uh, loads it took to you know okay uh, how many uh, instructions it took you to uh, retire these loads, right? Mm -hmm. So so the common denominator there would be 
uh, instructions or will be loads or will be cycles, and then you can say, how does that compare to the baseline? I, I think I'm, I'm doing a circular, I, I don't know if I can um, be clearer than this. Um, we're not using time because time, uh, it doesn't give me a sense of how much uh, you know how many instructions were uh, put away, how many cycles were used, or so there 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 are not that many things that you can uh, normalize against. Mm -hmm. So when you use a, a, you want to compare the ratios, like how do you uh, maybe you if you divide up the ratios and they're the same, then there's no uh, there's no information gain from there. I can't glean any information. So by normalizing either by the denominator of the metric, then I can say okay. Uh, I can use that as a base, as a reference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Okay, we got a question from uh, Professor Ding here. So Big Mac is uh, attempt to normalize across different location conditions. So what's a good basis to normalize for performance analysis? Uh, so it depends, I would think. Uh, what is it that you're looking at? You're looking at, so when you look at, uh, let's say you look at the roof line model, you, you are, you're looking at, you know, uh, optimal, a peak performance for memory bandwidth and you're looking at peak performance of floating point operations, right? And then you more or less try to figure out you, where does your program fall is in reference for those things, right? And mm -hmm. then you more or less can say, I need to go either one way or the other in order to achieve more performance. Mm -hmm. That's one way of looking at things. The other way, the way I'm looking at it is that more like I have this reference point, which is this metric. And then you can make a modification and then you can you can see relatively the difference or how far along or whether or not uh, the, the metric was beneficial or not. When you look at the, when you look at the uh, top-down analysis, it's usually one change at a time, right? So you, you, you look at a loop, a uh, for loop, and then you, you, you modify the, uh, uh, you, you increase the, uh, the, the, the the better use of the cache or something through through the uh, through the use of the iterator. So you, you flip around the uh, the array so that you have better access, the strides better, right? And then you 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 look at the results on the on the different uh, top down metrics to see uh, whether it became uh, CPU bound, memory bound, and then you go okay, so now it's going to be floating point bound, and then you you work your way, you work your way. Um, but what happens when you look at when the rates don't change that much? But there was some change, right? And then you turn uh, at least in my in my 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 point of doing this is that by normalizing against whatever rate you're looking at, whatever data you have available, then you are able to see whether or not there was a change, and if the change took place, whether or not it's an overvalue, undervalue based on the thing that you are dividing by. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If it's a long answer for little game. Yeah, I, I get I get here uh, the part of your answer that uh, can uh, Rufland is really about the peak possible performance. It's actually not necessarily reachable, but then can normalize to say how much potential is there. That certainly makes sense. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, okay, great, great. So I think let's move to next part. Uh, this is a great session, okay? So all, all of this works out very interesting. I mean, introduce some new theories or some uh, new, new, I mean, uh, definitions or new tools. These are very useful for, for our community. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for